My name is Jim Cady. I was born in Peoria, Illinois, October 5, 1917. Most of my younger years were spent in uh, Peoria, Illinois. I graduated from a grade in high school there. I was drafted three weeks before Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. So I was in Camp Croft, South Carolina when the war broke up. Well, after 13 weeks, I uh, went through a little maneuvers they had there, and I decided if I was going to fight this war, I wanted someplace to ride. So I didn't care if it was a jeep or a tank or truck or something. And so happened they happened to have some uh, on the bulletin board that some examinations for aircraft, air, air Force cadets. Become a member of the Army Air Corps and take to the skies for a flying punch at the axis. So I thought, well, might as well take a chance. So I took the exam and passed and got into the Air Corps then. No. This is not the interior of a bird cage, and the man you see obviously is not a bird. But he does lay eggs. He's training to become a bombardier, the boy who drops these beauties where they do the most good. Well, from the training to be a bombardier and then getting assigned to a group uh, it took about six months. I flew with the 449th Air Group. In combat, you flew at about 18 to 20,000 feet, and the temperature was uh, about 50 below. I never flew any night missions, <clears throat> although we flew, you know, you take off maybe early in the morning, but uh, all my missions were day missions. Sometimes it'd be uh, Four hours, depending on where it was, and other times I've flew, flown eight hours. Well, most of my, I flew uh, 21 missions in Italy, and uh, most of them were up and down the uh, Italian peninsula there. And, uh, we, a couple of missions, long ones we flew, we flew to Regensburg in Germany, and Steyr in Austria, and Weiner Neustadt in Austria, and then, we flew to uh, Budapest and flew to Sofia in Bulgaria. And then uh, they dis my uh, <clears throat> pilot went on a mission to uh, explain to a new crew what it was like to be in combat, and he was shot down. So uh, then uh, your given off to another crew and uh, to various crews and you just weren't with the same person, same one all the time. And for some reason they decided they wanted to uh, send a crew from Italy to the 8th Air Force and someone from the 8th Air Force to Italy to so see how the different places operated and uh, so I was chosen and they got a motley crew together and we flew to uh, England and uh, then we were in the 8th Air Force. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. Yes, they got us up about 2.30 in the morning. And uh, we had, we went down to the briefing room. They had, we had no idea it was D-Day until we got down there and then they told us. And we were to bomb a, a bridge ahead of the uh, landing group. And so we took off and we, uh, we flew over the, uh, almost alongside of the uh, invasion people there. And we saw all the planes and all the boats in the water and uh, never saw so many airplanes and boats in my life. And uh, 
we bombed uh, a bridge ahead of the uh, troops. Having seen the uh, invasion, you know, just for a few moments as we flew by, I really wanted to ever go to the beach there, and I went to the beach. And I was really stunned, and you could just imagine those guys getting off of those Higgins boats with all their gear and everything and trying to come in the three, four hundred yards with the Germans shooting at them. No place to hide, it's just absolute beach. There wasn't even a bloody grass there for them to get behind. And those guys that did that, I can never thank them enough. And especially when you go up into the, to the um, cemetery there, they said something about that there's 8,300 crosses there. When you step onto that cemetery, it just something happens. You step out there and you just can hardly believe it. Boy, I tell you, we lost a, a whole generation and then some then. Talk about the greatest generation. They were it. I'll tell you, when you first get in the service, you have, you have all kinds of high ideals and all this sort of thing and what you're going to do and so forth. But you know, most of those uh, young guys who were in there were 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds. And just uh, all, uh, I don't know, building up to going into service. And you grow up from a boy to a man the first time that bullet whizzes by your ear. And when you discover that people are somebody's trying to kill you, and they can tell you all about it, but until you go through that experience, you never know really what combat and war is all about. You can read about it, you can see it in the movies, people can talk about it, but until you experience it, and my hat's off to all those veterans. I don't care what war they were in, Vietnam, uh, Korea, the ones over in Afghanistan and Iraq. My hat's off to them. God bless them.